forget to hit that subscribe button. You know, I'm in the middle of my subscription drive. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers uh, by the end of this year, and I can't do that without you. So again, if you like the content uh, and you want to join us, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it very much. Okay, on to today's show. You know, I was out here today uh, harvesting uh, some tomatoes from my garden here on my deck, and as I was working on the uh, the garden and, and getting these delicious tomatoes, uh, I started thinking about guitars because, you know, i got to think about shows <laughs> for this program. And one topic that I thought would be great uh, just to show uh, new converts, uh, you know, support to a brand is talking about five reasons why Epiphones are a better deal than a Gibson. Now we're talking about specifically uh, the Epiphone Les Pauls versus the Gibson Les Paul. And in this case, I'm going to put the Epiphone uh, 1959 uh, Les Paul up against any USA standard when I make these statements. Uh, custom shops are another story all in its own. However, there are certain construction uh, qualities of that Epiphone that are, ma that are mirroring uh, the uh, custom shop. As a matter of fact, as you know, that guitar was built in conjunction with the USA uh, custom shop. So we'll set our guidelines on that today or what we're going to discuss. So these are five reasons why an Epiphone Les Paul uh, nowadays is a, a better deal than a Gibson Les Paul. And number one reason is tone wood. You know, uh, I find this whole discussion of tone wood to be very interesting because uh, the fact of the matter is you'll hear people make statements like well uh, USA built uh, Les Pauls are made with real mahogany well frankly uh, speaking there is no such thing as a real mahogany mahogany has uh, many uh, different uh, varieties within its uh, genus and uh, I guess if you were going to pick one uh, that would be considered you know, mahogany, mahogany, that would be the Cuban mahogany. So, uh, no, uh, that is not a true statement. Uh, it's not made out of real mahogany, it's made out of a type of mahogany, a very dense mahogany, uh, which is why you were getting 10, 11, 12 pounders, and also why they had to do chambering. Uh, the Epiphones are made from a very uh, more porous uh, kind of mahogany that uh, it's got a good quality to it that you can do solid builds like the 59 and still weigh under you know 10 pounds. Uh, mine weighs in at 8.8 pounds. So yeah, this whole subject of you know real woods, tone woods, the whole thing is 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 becoming actually uh, kind of nonsensical in the internet age. Anybody can look that up. That uh, mahogany, there's there's all kinds of mahogany and. Uh, I've had some great guitars that are made out of bass wood. Uh, my Telecaster uh, that I've uh, had for years, the Fender, Japanese made one, is bass wood. So tone wood, I don't know about that. Uh, and also the whole good wood era thing, that's, that's kind of funny to me too. That's a separate subject, but the fact that, uh, th that Gibson uses good wood, well, that's not true. In the words of Sammy Ash, we use the uh, the poor quality wood to make the Gibson Les Paul classics back in the late 80s and through the early 2000s. So, yeah, let's not get caught up in the whole tone wood issue. That's that's a non-starter. So, if you're looking at that, it really comes down to the quality of the wood. And yes, Gibsons have a better quality mahogany. The one that they use is of a better quality than, you know, the one that's used in the Epiphone guitar. However, they are both mahogany. Uh, so there's that. Uh, Gibson directly uh, controls the supply and the inventory and the manufacturing process is there. So they are very hands-on with that. Uh, the Epiphone factory is not some kind of subcontractor company. That's ridiculous. Uh, they are uh, fully uh, owned and uh, run by Gibson Business. So uh, again, which is one of the reasons why you're starting to see more and more Gibson parts show up on Epiphone guitars. We're starting to see the CTS pots, the Burst Burger pickups, uh, the Switchcraft uh, uh, switches on, and a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and uh, 
branded Epiphone uh, tuners that are the equivalents to the Gibson. So, so the whole Made in China issue is really negated by the fact, as I was stating, that these people who work at Epiphone work for Gibson for years. They work for Epiphone for at least 20. I would think at this point that they know how to make a good product, and they do. They have to get within a certain price constraint that they have, and we'll talk more about that later. Okay, number three. Uh, well, it's not a Gibson. Well, you know, uh, no, but neither is a Heritage. Uh, but Heritage uh, guitars are made in the old Kalamazoo factory in the old style that the Gibsons uh, of yesteryear were made. Whereas the current Gibsons are made in it, the new uh, uh, processing, uh, the uh, process that they do. And uh, so therefore, even if you're going to say it's not a real Gibson, well, Gibsons aren't really Gibsons at the back. Heritage, I would throw forward, is more a truer Les Paul than the ones that are produced by Gibson USA. I'm not talking about the custom shop, that's a separate issue. So let's not get into that kind of semantics either. Uh, the reality is, is that on an Epiphone it says Les Paul. Uh, for copyright uh, issues, it couldn't say that unless uh, Gibson gives a big thumbs up on it. So it is a Les Paul. Again, we're talking about price points as far as these instruments are concerned. Number four, hardware. Uh, I love to hear that in, that Epiphone uses inferior hardware. I'm not going to take a long time with this because we just covered it. Uh, the Gibson branded hardware is now going on Epiphone guitars. So that issue is also a group one and washed out. Also, it's very easy to upgrade uh, an, an Epiphone uh, for a few hundred dollars to get to the level of, of good playing, you know, Les Paul uh, without spending the amount of money that you would have to spend on getting a USA standard. So something to think about there as well. Another reason why I think it's a better deal. Okay, this is a bonus one. The whole poly versus nitro thing. Uh, you know, I play poly guitars, I play nitro guitars. I prefer nitro guitars because the way they look and the way they age, but sound-wise I've heard no difference at all. So again, uh, you can toss that out of the window when you're making consideration on which one to buy. And number five, the fifth reason why an Epiphone is a better deal than a Gibson is that whatever you buy, it's going to be you playing it. If I took a 2x4 and strung it with spaghetti and slash played it, it's going to sound like slash playing a 2x4 strung with spaghetti. Uh, in other words, it's all in here. It's all The tone is all in your hands. Uh, having a superior instrument in order to bring those uh, tones forth, of course, is very important. But there's a law of diminishing returns. It means that when something no longer really equates what you're paying for. If I can get an uh, Epiphone, like the 1959, to sound equitable, and I owned uh, the uh, standard equivalent, the 1960, uh, the 60s standard, done 2019, and to my ears, professionally, they both sounded the same. And therefore, with the law of diminishing returns, I couldn't justify continuing owning that $2,500 standard uh, when I had something that did the job for less than half the price. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> an absurd uh, discount on what it cost over here. So there's that law of diminishing returns that you have to take into consideration when you're buying that as well. Uh, so these are my thoughts. Uh, just real quick, I thought I would uh, share them with you on why I think Epiphones are a better deal. I think all the things that I laid out shows you that it really comes down to your personal taste. If you're about what it says on the headstock, then you're going to care about that. If you're about the quality of it, then I think there's some equitable things there that you can find quality in both. Uh, if you're going for price points, then obviously the Epiphone is the, is the better deal. So something to think about, something I thought I would share with you guys today. I'm going to get back to uh, harvesting my tomatoes, and until the next show, you guys take care. I'll see you later.